There are lots of networks around the world, and there is a trend in ignoring some of the most difficult problems in the world. Some might report, but there is a horrible tendency to whitewash a lot of what's going on. And we don't want to do that here. We want to uh, face the difficulties of the world head on. And to help us with that tonight, we have, uh, we'll have a couple of special guests. At first, we're going to have a Christian sister from Denmark to talk about the situation uh, among uh, Christian and Muslim immigrants over there. And then in a little while, we'll have on Dr. Bill Warner, um, who uh, runs the Center for the Study of Political Islam, to discuss a bit of the situation. But uh, we wanted to bring our sister Jomana uh, on right now. Jomana, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Hi. Now, I saw uh, a clip of you uh, pretty recently. And the clip was titled, Christian Arabs Attacked in Denmark by Muslims, in case anyone wants to uh, search for that. Uh, Christian Arabs Attacked in Denmark by Muslims. Now, we want to talk about a little bit about, about that situation, but I, I was hoping we could get a little of your background. Did you grow up in Denmark or uh, come from somewhere else? What's your background? I was uh, born in Denmark, and I have Lebanese parents. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, I, w I grew up in a place where there was a majority of Muslims. Um, so uh, I can uh, tell you about what I've experienced in that p place. It's actually a ghetto. It's called Gelo. Um, uh, as a child, uh, what I experienced, uh, children my age used to call me an infidel. Uh, and uh, they questioned me if my dad and brothers were circumcised. Um, and at that age, I really didn't know what circumcision is. I was only eight years old. I was bullied in preschool because I ate pork. My older brother used to get hit in the playground uh, because he used to wear a cross around his neck. That was my experience in my childhood because of my Christian faith. Uh, that was the kind of bullying I had to go through. So, so uh, ju ju just, just to clarify, you're born and raised in Denmark. So you're born and raised in Europe, but it's a predominantly Muslim area of, uh, of Denmark. And th you're, you're treated like this. You're not, you're not treated as, as, uh, as one amongst equals. I, I, exactly. I'm not treated as uh, as a as a as a white Danish girl. Uh, I, I'm treated as an a, an Arab Christian infidel from Muslims. That's how I'm treated when I'm around. Uh, when I'm in places where there's majority of Muslims. And so. Um that's that's when you were as a that's when you were a child. Did did, did things get better when you uh, when you when you grew up? Uh, not at all. Uh, when I grew up, uh, I was around eighteen years old when I decided to um, uh, to move to the capital, which is Copenhagen, and I got an apartment in another uh, place where there is a majority of Muslims, um, and um, and and that the bullying changed to harassment. And I started like just going out from my home uh, because I wasn't fully covered. I could just get a remark or a sexual remark or people call me a whore just because I wasn't co fully covered. Um, that's the kind of remarks I used to get. Um, and, uh, and men around uh, 55 years old could come and question me about asking me about Ask me one time again, and if I say no again, then I'm a cold a whore, and I'm pretty sure they can see my cross. Mm -hmm. So, um, because I wear it always on. So, um, so, well, and this is this is kind of things that I've experienced. Mm -hmm. But like uh, from on the third of August, uh, where you saw the clip, uh, mm -hmm. the one that I've sent you. Uh, on the 3rd of August, I was sitting in my car, seven men surrounded the car, one of them put his foot on the uh, front bumper of my car. I questioned him what was wrong, 
And what he answered me was, do you think I'm looking at you, you ugly bitch? Look at what you have on, you whore. I was very shocked from the answer that he gave me. After, after that, he saw my cross. And um, when he saw my cross, he called me with a large sexual smart um, and he kept on talking to me in like five minutes and uh, really insulting me and and then he ended the whole thing say, uh, telling me do you know what we do with Christians like you you get stoned to death I was very very scared I've never ever experienced someone giving me a death threat like that I've heard about people getting stoned in Iran or in Afghanistan but I've never ever heard someone telling me that I have to get stoned because of my Christian faith. After that, uh, I drove away from the place. I called the police and, um, and they came uh, after 30 minutes. The man that gave me this death threat they had the chance to run, run away. While I was talking to the cops, uh, a, a car drove right next to us while we were talking and the cops were talking. And, and they took a video of me and the and the uh, and the number of my uh, car number plates of my car um, and I, would, I I went and confronted the person and the police just told them that they had to drive away and which they did and then the police drove behind me back home because I was really scared and then I decided to go uh, to the media and say say what uh, tell them what happened with me anonymously and after two days, I, I got an appointment with them after two days. While I was driving, a black van drove after me. They were honking, and they drove in very, very high speed. And, and then they changed to the next track. And when I looked right next to me, it was the same man that took a video of me that day I got my death threat by getting stoned. Um, so I tried to vanish from the place. I was, it was very horrifying just like knowing someone is after me and following me by a big black van. Um, after, after that, uh, when I was d done with my interview, I, um, I, I drove back home, packed uh, uh, some of my stuff and went uh, to my friend's house uh, to stay over there because I was really scared I couldn't be home anymore. I knew someone is following me. They have a video of me, and they have, and they know who I am. Um, so I stayed there, and uh, after like around one week, uh, I decided to go back home to get some of my clothes uh, because I needed to have some changing clothes and stuff like that. Uh, and I decided, I decided to go back home at like three at night so that no one would recognize my car or recognize me. Uh, so uh, while I was driving back home, uh, the man that uh, gave me that death threat saw me from a long distance. So what he did, he grabbed a glass bottle and threw it after me while I was uh, driving back home. And uh, that was really, really scary. And uh, then as a lot of articles started, a lot of uh, like uh, people started to contact me, and uh, articles was written about me in a religion dot dk, and uh, and a lot of big uh, uh, media newspapers and stuff like that. And the media called me, and it's a mainstream media called TV Two News, to so that I could share my story and and tell them what have happened. And when I did that, surprisingly, I started, I, I told my story and it came on the media. So what happened afterwards, because they told, they told them what my Facebook account is, a lot of people started uh, sending me messages about that they want to behead me, they want to rape me and kill me at the same place, they want to hang me, just because... I said what I have went through as a Christian, mm -hmm. uh, and and actually I didn't even say directly that it was Muslim the Muslims that have done that. What I said in the video that you also saw that I also have Muslim friends. They would never ever dare to say something like that about me uh, or or tell me those kind of remarks. Um, but 
but people started writing to me that I want to demonize Islam and I'm after I'm trying to make a, a split between two big religions and uh, I'm I'm just I have a, a like I, I'm trying to do problems and I'm lying and this doesn't uh, that's not true and also some people said that it's my problem and it's it's my fault that I was in Apple with shorts on uh, and and they gave me uh, they like they blamed me for uh, for for what have happened mm-hmm. and this uh, people started just they they copied uh, like they they copied the, my pictures shared it on facebook groups and my name was shared on muslim groups and arab groups uh, people were questioning on where i was they wanted to find me and when everything when that was happening i was really scared my own friend was scared then i had to move to a crisis shelter because i was i felt that people are after me then i started getting messages that people are after me from berlin from jotland from copenhagen and it didn't even end here i started getting phone calls about people want to kill me and they're after me they know who my parents are and and they wanted to do pornographic pictures of me uh, fake pictures of me uh, that's that's what i've experienced actually and uh, that, that didn't even stop over there because i was once in town where two girls came up to me and pushed me and told me that they want to hit me until i'm dead um and yeah that's what I've experienced after coming on the mainstream media. Now, um, now, uh so so this 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 was in Copenhagen. Yes. So so this is this is the capital of a major Western nation. And 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 just just to recap, your your crime was that when someone th- surrounded your car and threatened you, uh, you told police. And then, as you pointed out, I saw the video clip where, where you were interviewed, and you're pointing out that you have Muslim friends who would never do this. So you are drawing a distinction between, uh, you know, the people who are doing this and, and your Muslim friends. And yet, now you, you, have, you have to go into hiding for, for your life in a, in a European nation. Exactly. Well, uh, as you said, I said that I have Muslim friends that would never ever dare to tell me those kind of stuff. And I do know that there are Muslims that wouldn't even say those kind of things. So I'm not saying, I'm not blaming all the Muslims for what have happened to me in Napo or the place where I've got my death threats. I'm not doing that, but that's what the people are trying to put in my mouth as if I've said that. Mm-hmm. And that's called guilty by association, I guess. But it's I I I have never ever said that it's all the Muslims that have done that to me. Now this is a this is, this should be disturbing to everyone, but it's especially disturbing to Americans because we there seems to be two different mentalities here uh, in in Europe and America. The the sort of the 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 general theory in America is called the melting pot. It's that people come from all different cultures around the world and sort of get melted into one unique culture because you know people are bringing things from everywhere else but it all comes together as one culture it doesn't it doesn't always work out like that but that's the 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 goal is for is is for everyone to come together as one culture whereas now in Europe the 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 goal is uh, multiculturalism where if you come to Europe from a different culture you don't adopt a new culture you don't melt uh, you don't sort of melt together with everyone else to form one culture you maintain the culture of the place where you came from and you don't change it and and a lot of european leaders would actually regard it as as bad if you change your culture you would be adopting a european culture and and they have such contempt nowadays i'm, I'm talking about europeans and european leaders who many of whom have such contempt for their own culture that they would regard it as bad for someone else to come and adopt uh, European culture and, and 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 so something that really sounds good hey wouldn't it be great if lots of different cultures come together uh, you know come together and maintain their own cultures while still living together uh, in harmony that sounds good 
The problem is that some people come from cultures where you oppress everyone who disagrees with you, um, where you target and bully anyone you, you don't like. And if, if they're not required to change, then you, you're going to end up very rapidly with a segregated society. Not a, a, th there will be different cultures, but they will be separated. They will be segregated. They, they, they won't be able to integrate. And it seems like that's what's happening. And uh, I don't know. What, what, what do you think? Is, is that what's going on? Well, you just described it perfectly. That's exactly what's happening in Denmark. People are, or the, the, the immigrants, they're, they're making their own uh, 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 like kind of a segregated place and they're they, they they're not integrating with the, with, with the Danes they, they're just doing like they are practicing whatever they want to practice like if you go to the places like as I call them the ghettos you see everything like as if you're not even in Denmark uh, really, like you, they, they, they even, they don't want, like even the people, they don't want to be a part of the, of the, or be talk with the Danes, or they don't want to, to, to associate, be associated with the Danish people, and that's a big problem. I do not at all uh, consider multiculturalism a, a good idea at all because. It, as, as you said, they are um, in, in those places. They're trying to suppress those people that uh, that are not like them. For example, I am a Christian, and if, if for a Muslim, I'm not as worthy as him because that's what is written in his Quran uh, that I am not as good as him. Uh, so that then they they they, they can practice whatever they want to practice, and it only goes like. I am a kind of a minority when I'm old, in that kind of place mm -hmm. where they, the majority of Muslims are, and then I get, I, I can get to, uh, yeah, uh, bullied or harassed, and 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 there they have their full right to do that based on the Quran, actually. Mm -hmm. so, and, to, and and yeah, and that is, and you're absolutely correct. And, and for anyone who's who's thinking that that you're making this up, chapter ninety-eight, verse six of the Quran says that. Uh, Christians, Jews, and polytheists are the worst of creatures. And as you, as you pointed out, there, there are Muslims who don't pay much attention to that. There are Muslims who don't try to uh, oppress people. But the, the, the way... Thank God for that. Yeah, yeah. yeah but, yeah, but the, the way the Islamic teachings seem to work is that even though there are, lots, there are plenty of Muslims who, who live far better lives than a lot of what we would see in the Quran, um, it seems to just increase the percentages. So even though there are plenty of Muslims uh, who don't want to hurt or, or oppress anyone, it's a greater percentage of, of Muslims who would like to oppress others than of, than of non-Muslims, of, of, of Christians or something like that. And so what, what, you, what you end up with is, uh, you know, in, a, in an area where, and, and by the way, it's, it's sort of a similar, it's, it's a similar uh, pattern wh whether you go to the Middle East or whether you go to, to Denmark. If you have an area with, with thousands of Muslims and non-Muslim groups are, are the minority, uh, you don't need every Muslim to go around oppressing people. You just need some and can make that a very, very uh, difficult place to live. Uh, because, I mean, who's going to stand Who's going to stand against them? If you stand against them, you're a target. If you're a Christian and you object or you, you talk to the police, you are now a target. Now now you have to go into hiding. But also, if you're a Muslim and you speak out, they're going to target you. They're, they're going to say that uh, that you're one of them. And by the way, that's a, that's a Quranic idea too. Chapter 5, verse 51 uh, commands Muslims not to be friends with Jews and Christians. And so uh, if a Muslim is friends with a Jew or a Christian and is saying, hey, leave these Jews and Christians alone, it's very easy for Muslims to then turn that Muslim into a target and say, how dare you? You're, you're going against the Quran and siding with the, with the Christians and not with, your, not with your own people. And then so then they're a target. And so it just ends up with this, this huge spiral with, uh, with, with no real way out. And, and it just seems that European leaders are, are helping this process along rather than uh, taking a stand. Uh, I did want to ask, um, because you, you've, shared, you've shared your experience, but I also know that uh, you, you, know, you live over there, so you know many other people, you know other Christians, and yeah. uh, you have a page on Facebook. I was, I was wondering uh, if you could share some, some, uh, some, the experiences of other people. Is it similar to yours, or is it better? Well, uh, as I said, when I came on the mainstream media, TV2 News, 
um, although I got a lot of death threats uh, from people, I also got a lot of messages uh, from Christians. They were writing to me uh, about what they have been going through, how they have they are harassed. I got messages from parents telling me about how their kids are being spit on, they're being hit in the playground, and I am not surprised at all. And, and by the way, I this this, this is in this, this this is in yes. this is in Europe, right? This is in Europe where this is going on. Yes, this is in Europe. People that have tried to reach out, they are being anonymous. They are afraid to come out and speak and tell about their experiences. I've got a, 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 a school letter uh, where uh, where um, where the Muslims kids, like that was like eight nine year old kids, they don't want to play with the Danish and the Christians or the whites because they are infidels for them. And now when I think when I think about this kind of situation that an eight year old kid doesn't want to play with someone his age just because he's an infidel, well that means that his own parents or someone is telling him that this uh, Christian is different than you, do not play with him because it's haram or whatever they want to tell those kids. That's the parents' problem. They are Kids do not know what an infidel is when they are seven or eight years old. I do not believe that. Uh, that that kids would know what it is if not older people have told them that. Um, other things was uh, I uh, there's a, um, a Christian woman that told me about um, uh, that uh, men came up to her and told her that she should wear a hijab on. I've had um, I've had in one month and a half I got over forty messages from Christians that are being harassed, they are being bullied, they are getting sexual remarks, they are uh, like they are being uh, assaulted, sexually assaulted, and, and that was only in one month and a half. After that, I started getting messages from ex-Muslims, converts, who converted to Christianity, telling I had live interviews face to face with them. I had an interview with a Turk, Turkish man telling me a, that whenever he left Islam and converted to Christianity, his own mom came after him with a knife. She wanted to kill him. And, and I've also had another interview with a Pakistani man telling me he used to. He he lived in the in in the refugee camps. He told me that because he tried to hide that he was an ex-Muslim, but whenever they found out about that, uh, the other Muslims around him, the Pakistani Muslims, they tried to attack him and and harass him. Then he had to move from a place to place, from a refugee camp to another place. And, and this is all going on, and, and I feel like the politicians and the political correct people, they're trying to hide this from us. They don't want to say that this minority of immigrants are harassing another minority, which are Christians. They just want to hide the truth from us. That's what's happening here in a democratic country like Denmark. They don't even want to say what's happening with the Christians. Whenever someone speaks out, they make as if it's, he's just one, uh, one uh, it's only one issue, and this doesn't really happen. But I can tell you that also a preacher call, called Masood, he's an ex-Muslim, he's a priest now, uh, he also was harassed, and, he, and they tried to ruin his car a couple of times, so he had to move away from the place he used to live in. It's called Olsevals Motion. Another Christian uh, priest, uh, two days ago, uh, he uh, moved uh, from the whole country, Denmark, he moved to, to, uh, to, to Germany because he was getting harassed too. And uh, from four days ago, a church had to lock newly their doors while they're preaching because 
robber people are going inside and robbing the, the uh, robbing uh, stuff and personal personal belongings of people like mobile phones and they also found a bible in the garbage i wonder who those person who those people are that are doing those things so now the ch that church has to close the doors while they're preach preaching um, so that's what's happening in Denmark. Another thing is, another preacher, her name is Helle, she contacted me and told me that she is hiding, she, she had hid uh, four ex-Muslims in her home because they were getting harassed, they were getting bullied, and, they, and people were after them just because they converted from Christianity to Islam. And it doesn't even end over here. 6th, 6th of March 2014, and a, a guy from Afghanistan who is 48 years old, he's an ex-Muslim, he was attacked by a knife in a refugee camp. And there's a lot of things that's happening, and I can keep on telling you and, and telling you names until tomorrow, and I can assure you that we are not just one issue this is a big problem happening here in Denmark with and the political correct people are trying to to just say that it's not a big deal and it's not a big problem and there was a hearing from around three weeks ago in the about at, about the uh, persecuted Christians where the some of the political correct priests priests try to say that uh, in, for example, Iraq, people, uh, Christians should have a good friendship with the Muslims and they have to come good together and try to deal their own uh, problems together. And I don't believe that this is a good idea because they're already persecuted from Muslims. And, um, and I feel that some of the political correct priests, they're trying to I don't know, they don't want to ruin their good dialogue with the imams, for example, you know. is So that's why it has to go, unfortunately, a, uh, unfortunately has to, 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 to go on us Christians. It's going to be our problems. We're the ones persecuted. They, want to, they don't want to talk about those problems because they don't want to ruin their dialogues with the imams and go to the mosques. Yeah, and just talk with those Jomana, it's it's a it's it's a similar situation here in the United States. It, it's not nearly as bad as it is in a, in certain places uh, of Europe, but there's something similar here in that no matter what's going on in the world, no matter what's going on in the world, no matter what's going on with ISIS, no matter how badly uh, Christians or uh, or Yazidis or other groups are being uh, are being persecuted. The, the tendency among uh, many church leaders is to remain silent because if you speak out and say there's a problem, you'll immediately be accused of being a racist and a bigot and a hate monger. But uh, uh, over here, at least, over here, at least, it will just be name calling, right? Uh, over here, the sort of the worst thing you almost ever have to worry about if you speak out against Islam is is being called uh, names, being called a hate monger, a bigot, things like that. Uh, if you're like me, you get death threats and so on. But but most 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 people wouldn't even wouldn't even have to deal with with that little bit. Um, whereas in Europe, you you have you actually have to go into hiding. And so you're you're referring to uh, to church leaders over there, and they don't want to ruin their dialogue. But you know it, they can't if it, as soon as they speak out, as soon as someone says, hey, there's a problem here. There are groups of Muslims who are harassing Christians, forcing them out of their homes. Uh, that person would be labeled a, a racist and a bigot and a hate monger and become a target and have his property destroyed um, and be forced out because no one wants a, no one wants a, you know, a church leader who's causing problems. But it's the same thing with politicians. If, if a politician says, we've got a problem here, we have to do something about it, um, now this politician is a racist and a bigot and a hate monger. And the, the situation just seems to be um, in an area, in an area, once you have uh, a Muslim majority, well, some of those Muslims, not all, but some of them are going to go around harassing and persecuting Christians. And those Christians aren't going to want to stay there. They're going to want to leave. So then the percentage of Muslims increases. And then as, it's, as it increases, the persecution increases until, the, I mean, the goal seems to be just completely Islamic areas. And why that's disturbing is that that's supposed to be the opposite of the goal, right? It's supposed to be the opposite of the goal. The goal is for everyone to live together in harmony. And leaders are just encouraging 
uh, they're just encouraging this, this, this horrible, horrible uh, spiral. Well, uh, uh, sister, we, we, we thank you. We thank you for all your input. I'd like to have you uh, on, on the show again. We, we have to go to a break, and then we're going to have Dr. Um, Bill Warner on there uh, to, to, to discuss some of the Islamic background of this. Uh, but, but I thank you. And uh, uh, how, can, how can people, um, do you have any contact info or website or anything you'd like to share real quick? I just have my Facebook, and I have my yeah, I have my Facebook uh, page. It's called Jamana Jojo Joy, and um, I share a lot of things about Christians and about all the uh, all the messages that uh, Christians try to write to me. Um, but uh, I just uh, want to say that for all the Christians that are listening, don't be afraid. Just talk, speak out, say what's going on. Don't be afraid. I know it's not that nice to be in my own, uh, uh, my own, like what I've gone through. Now I am persecuted and I have to live around different places. Um, but we have to do something about that. We have to speak out and say something because this is, this is not fair. This is not fair to go through stuff like that. Um, and I just want to say thank you so much, David Wood, for having me on your show. I really appreciate that. Thank you for your good work, and God bless you. And thank you. Thank you again, sister. And uh, for, for everyone out there, for, I'm, I'm especially talking to Christians in America. I understand Christians not being able to speak out in the Middle East. I understand that. I understand even Christians in, in some rough places in, in, in places like Denmark not, not being ready to speak out, knowing what could happen. You Christians were in America, and you, can, and you sit here and watch this, and you refuse to speak out because you're worried about being called names, and so you let this thing happen. You're cowards. You need to stop it. You need to man up. You need to be men and women of faith and stand up for your persecuted uh, brothers and sisters. I, I, exactly. I'm not treated as uh, as a as a as a white Danish girl. I, I, I'm treated as an a, an Arab Christian infidel from Muslims. That's how I'm treated when I'm around. Uh, when I'm in places where there's majority of Muslims. And so um, that's, that's, when you were as a, that's when you were a child. Did, did, did things get better when you, uh, when you, when you grew up? Uh, not at all. Uh, when I grew up, uh, I was around 18 years old when I decided to, um, uh, to move to the capital, which is Copenhagen. And I got an apartment in another uh, place where there is a majority of Muslims. Um, and um, and and that the bullying changed to harassment, and I started like just going out from my home uh, because I wasn't fully covered. I could just get a remark or a sexual remark, or people call me a whore just because I wasn't co fully covered. Um, that's the kind of remarks I used to get, um, and. Uh, and men around uh, 55 years old could come and question me about asking me about ask me one time again and if I say no again then I'm a cold a whore and I'm pretty sure they can see my cross mm -hmm. so um, because I wear it always on so, um, so well and this is this is kind of things that I've experienced, mm -hmm. but like uh, from on the 3rd of August, uh, where you saw the clip. Uh, Recently, and the clip was titled, Christian Arabs Attacked in Denmark by Muslims, in case anyone wants to uh, search for that. Uh, Christian Arabs Attacked in Denmark by Muslims. Now, we want to talk about a little bit about, about that situation, but I, I was hoping we could get a little of your background. Did you grow up in Denmark or uh, come from somewhere else? What's your background? I was uh, born in Denmark and I have Lebanese parents. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, I, w I grew up in a place where there was a majority of Muslims. Um, so uh, I can uh, tell you about what I've experienced in that p place. It's actually a ghetto. It's called Gelo. Um uh, as a child, uh, what I experienced, uh, children my age used to call me an infidel, uh, and uh, they questioned me if I... There are 
lots of networks around the world, and there is a trend in ignoring some of the most difficult problems in the world. Some might report, but there is a horrible tendency to whitewash a lot of what's going on. And we don't want to do that here. We want to uh, face the difficulties of the world head on. And to help us with that tonight, we have, uh, we'll have a couple of special guests. At first, we're going to have a Christian sister from Denmark to talk about the situation uh, among uh, Christian and Muslim immigrants over there. And then in a little while, we'll have on Dr. Bill Warner, um, who uh, runs the Center for the Study of Political Islam, to discuss a bit of the situation. But uh, we wanted to bring our sister Jomana uh, on right now. Jomana, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Hi. Now, I saw uh, a clip of you uh, pretty recently. Dad and brothers were circumcised. In, and at that age, I really didn't know what circumcision is. I was only eight years old. I was bullied in preschool because I ate pork. My older brother used to get hit in the playground. Uh, because he used to wear a cross around his neck. That was my experience in my childhood because of my Christian faith. Uh, that was the kind of bullying I had to go through. So, so uh, ju ju just, just to clarify, you're born and raised in Denmark. So you're born and raised in Europe, but it's a predominantly Muslim area of, uh, of Denmark. And... You're treated like this. You're not. You're not treated as as uh, as one amongst equals. 